and the dead hear the living? When we visit them at the Qabr, when we say salam to them, can the dead hear and are they aware of the presence of those who are next to the Qabr? Even the Sahaba disagreed amongst themselves. Realize that what we're talking about is the issue of the dead hearing in the vicinity of the Qabr. No mainstream scholar in the history of Islam ever said that the dead can hear anything and everything. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is As-Sami' and Al-Basir. So we began by the first group of people, those who said they cannot hear. And at the head of this entire group of scholars is none other than our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha's position is the dead cannot hear. And the evidence she herself used is the Quran itself. And there are a number of verses, three of them, in fact, two are exactly the same verse, but repeated twice. Surat An-Naml, verse 80, and Surat Ar-Rum, verse 52, are exactly the same. فَإِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَى وَلَا تُسْمِعُ الصُّمَّ الدُّعَاءَ إِذَا وَلَّوْ مُدِبِرِينَ you, Ya Rasulullah, cannot make the dead to hear. And those that are yani, deaf, but meaning here arrogant and whatnot, if you call out to them, they're going to turn away. How can you make them hear? So the tafsir is, just like the arrogant Quraysh turn away and leave, Allah is saying, just like the dead cannot hear, so too the Quraysh will not hear. The third verse, Surah Fatir, verse 22. وَمَا يَسْتَوِ الْأَحْيَاءُ وَلَا الْأَمْوَاتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُسْمِعُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعٍ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ The living and the dead are not the same. Allah can allow anyone he wants to to hear and you cannot make the one in the Qabr to hear. In the other camp or the other group are also many scholars. At the head of them is none other than Umar ibn Khattar radiallahu anh, and his son Ibn Umar and a number of Sahaba. And their evidence are many, many, many ahadith. And the most powerful and the most explicit one is the one that occurred when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam buried the dead at the battle of Badr. He buried the Mushrik at the Battle of Badr. Anas ibn Malik says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left the Qabr of the people of Badr for three days. Then on the way back to Medina, he passed by their Qabr and he stopped and nadahum. He shouted out to them, Ya Aba Jahl ibn Hisham, Ya Umayya ibn Khalaf, Ya Utba ibn Rabi'ah, Ya Shayba ibn Rabi'ah. He mentioned the four Sanadid, the four evil leaders of the Quraysh by name. Have you found the promise of Allah true? Because I have found the promise of Allah Allah truth. Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, how can they hear you? How can they respond to you when you're speaking to them? And they have been decayed. They're beginning to decay. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I swear by the one in whose hands is my soul, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving qasam by Allah. You right now are no less able to hear me than they are able to hear me. You can hear me exactly the same as they can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, I give you qasam. You are hearing me as well as the people in the Qabr can hear but they cannot respond back to me. This evidence is the primary evidence that Umar ibn Khattab and his son ibn Umar used to say that the dead can hear. Of the evidences is the hadith in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, when the person is lowered in the grave and the hadith goes on, then the phrase comes, when his companions go back and leave, the one in the qabr can hear the footsteps of his own companions as they leave. The one in the qabr can hear the footsteps of his ashab when they go back and leave the cemetery. A third evidence, the famous hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, also in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Jibreel came and told him to go to the Qabr the last week of his life. The famous incident when he left in the middle of the night and Aisha followed, wondering he might go into another house if you get my drift here. And she's jealous what is going on and he rushes to Baqi' al-Gharqad. And Aisha overhears radiallahu anha, what is he saying? And he said the famous that we all know, As-salamu alaykum ya ahla qawmin min al-muslimin wal-mu'mineen wa inna insha this is the dua that is said when you visit a qabr. Now, how does this indicate that the dead can hear? The scholars say this salam is a salam of tahiyya. Assalamu alaikum, ya ahl al qubur. And now the Prophet is as if speaking to them. It's just a matter of time, I will meet you. So he is as if speaking to the people of the qabr, and this indicates obviously that they must be hearing them. Evidence number four the mutawatir narrations narrated by over 15 of the Sahaba that the Prophet 
وسلم, said that whoever sends his salat upon me, whoever sends his salam upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will convey their salams. And in other versions, Allah Azza wa Jal has angels that are wandering, touring in the land. Their only job is to convey the salams of my ummah to me. So wherever you send salam, the angels bring it to me. Now, this group of ulama, how do they understand the verses that we said are the evidence of group number one? This group understands that when Allah is saying, you cannot make the dead hear, the hearing is the hearing of benefit, not the hearing of a physical auditory sensation. And the evidence is the context. Because when Allah calls the Quraysh summun, Sum means deaf. They're not actually deaf to the voice. What are they deaf to? The message, the truth, acting upon it. They say the verses are very clear and the context indicates that what Allah is referencing is not the sama' of the ear, but the sama' of the qalb. How does group one interpret the evidences of group two? They say all of these evidences that you have brought forth are exceptions to the general rule. And exceptions don't make a rule. The people people of Badr, Allah Azza wa Jal made an exception for them to punish them. And the issue of the footsteps walking away, they say this is at the very instance when the ruh goes back into the body and munkar and nakir and then after that it finishes, after that is gone. So they say this is a 15-20 minute exception basically. So these are in a nutshell two of the mainstream positions of Islam who held each position. So as for the position that the dead can hear, I believe it is fair to say that a slight majority or maybe even a large majority held this position. And at the head of this list is Umar ibn Khattar radiallahu an, and his son Ibn Umar and Anas ibn Malik and Abu Hurair radiallahu an. And from the later scholars, you have Imam al-Nawawi, Imam al-Suyuti, Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Kathir and in recent times as well, the famous Mufassir al-Allama al-Shanqiti. Now who's on the other side? We also have some major ulama and beginning with Aisha radiallahu anha herself. And from the Tabi'un Qatada, the student of Ibn Abbas, from the great ulama, Ulama al-Bayhaqi, who died 438 Hijrah, Ibn Atiyah, also from Andalus, Ibn al-Jawzi, not Ibn al-Qayyim, Ibn Qudama, also one of the Hanbali scholars, Al-Qadi Abu Ya'la, also one of the Hanbali scholars, and from the Hanafi scholars, Ibn al-Humam and Ibn Abidin, and from the non-Madhabi scholars, Al-Shawkani from Yemen, and in our modern times, the famous Muhaddith Sheikh Al-Albani. Other great scholars, they looked at these evidences and they basically shrugged their shoulders and they said, we don't know. Most famous amongst them, Ibn Ibn Abdul Bar, the famous Andalusian scholar, Ibn Abdul Bar said, these issues of whether the dead can hear or not, we will never know for certain. We're not going to know it until we're there. And until then, there's no point discussing it. So just let it be. We also need to make a very important disclaimer. Whether the dead can hear or not, there is no action that is based upon this controversy. Nothing changes in terms of what we do outside of the Qabr. We need to be very clear whether the dead can hear or not. The fiqh of dealing with the dead does not change at all. We do not go to the Qabr and have conversations about life on earth. None of the Sahaba did this with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. None of the Tabi'un did it with the Sahaba. Much worse than this is to ask the person in the Qabr to do something for you. Oh, so-and-so, ask Allah to give me something. Or even worse than this, oh, so-and-so, you give me something. This is haram. This is a major sin and it is a stepping stone to shirk. Can the dead talk to each other? As Ibn Taymiyyah says, yes, it does appear to be the case. If Allah wills, they can talk and meet one another. And we, of course, have a confirmed narration that the prophets met one another in the night of Isra al Miraj and they are no longer alive. The Prophet was alive, but the rest of them, other than Isa, have gone on and they had conversations with one another, right? And we also have in the authentic narrations that the Prophet said, Musa and Adam had a fight. They didn't have it in this dunya. They had it in Barzakh. So from this, we can say Allah knows best that there is clearly indications that some of the dead can meet some of the dead. Who, when, where, what? As Ibn Abdul Bar says, we will never know until we are a part of that world. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation, Din John and Din John Bangla is our official channel. Visit our description box and pin command to buy some Islamic products. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islamic Motivation, Dinjon and Dinjon Bangla is our official channel. 
visit our description box and pin command to buy some islamic products thank you assalamu alaikum islamic motivation dinjon and dinjon bangla is our official channel visit our description box and pin command to buy some islamic products thank you assalamu alaikum islamic motivation dinjon and dinjon bangla is our official channel visit our description box and pin command to buy some islamic products thank you